Hello YouTube, today's video is going to continue with the concept of Kubernetes multi-cluster using F5 Big IP as a gateway to distribute traffic across the clusters, provide resiliency with Kubernetes and ultimately get traffic to the specific service uh, that you want within a specific cluster. So here we're talking about multi-Kubernetes clusters and providing um, ratio distribution or load balancing across the clusters. Today's video is a little different than, than, than the one I recorded last time. In today's video, we're going to specifically focus around the concept of service type load balancer. And so we'll, we'll go in into, into cover that a little bit, um, kind of, um, kind of in a minute. So I've presented this architecture before where we have multiple Kubernetes environments. And, and again, these Kubernetes environments can be of different flavors, of different versions. Uh, one could be Windows, one could be GPUs, one could be Linux. It, it really doesn't matter. The, the ultimate here, as long as it's of CNCF type flavor Kubernetes, and um, Big IP is front-ended with CIS, Container Ingress Services. And so CIS is really acting as your automation on the control plane side, specifically to distribute the weight across the clusters. In the previous, in the previous diagram or in the previous uh, in, uh, concepts that I kind of talked about, we were using transport server. And so transport server, virtual server is kind of where you define your specifications. That would kind of be where you define your load balancing information, like your public IP, your profiles, protocols, uh, your ports, etc., And of course the backend, right? The alternative or the services itself. But with service type load balancer, sometimes we, we, we cannot specifically define a CRD. And the reason we cannot define a CRD uh, is because it's Helm based, right? And so the application is deployed through Helm. An example of this is Istio. So if you have a service that is that doesn't allow you to specify a or specify the concept of a CRD, then you're kind of out of luck, right? And so that's one of the reasons why a um, cu couple of customers ask asked us to specifically develop multi-cluster services using service type load balancer. Service type load balancer, you need to define like the public IP somewhere. Normally, you get that from the load balance itself, and, and, that, and that's what's happening here. We're defining the load balancer. Uh, I'll kind of show you what that looks like. So in this environment, we've got three Kubernetes clusters we're using Flannel CNI. We're, distribution or, we're using a ratio to distribute across the clusters. We talked about uh, service type load balancer. It's currently here. This is going to ship in 2.19, which is going to ship around the middle of December. We're going to keep uh, we're going to keep everything pretty simple. No playing with CNIs, no specific licenses. It's just very simple. Three clusters, one big IP. Uh, no CRDs. So all the information is defined using the service. And so that's what's cool about this new example here. So as you can see, clusters one, two, and three. You'll see here, if you clone my repo, clusters one, two, and three, um, CIS is running in clusters one and two. One is primary, one is secondary. Like I said, 2.20, we're going we're gonna to work on arbitration between these two CISs, um, and uh, that'll probably be through some type of WebSocket. Um, services are really defined. You can define the services in all three clusters because you can move CIS around, or you can really just define the the CIS in potentially one cluster and tell, tell, this, tell CIS where the other clusters are. So let's go ahead and take a look at um, a couple things. So we're using static routes within, within CIS to say, create the networks, create the pod networks on Big IP. And so that's how the static route information, I, I've created many videos on this. You could actually look back at my channel. You could actually find one of the videos that talks specifically about these static routes. So I'm not going to go into that specifically, but what I am going to go into is the extended config map. So when you start looking at the extended config map, this is, like I said, CIS1 is primary, CIS2 secondary. So there's kind of a heartbeat uh, communication that goes back and forth between them. There's going to be some change here on specifically this piece uh, in probably 2.20. Um, however, it's there now, you can use it now, but we are making some updates. So this is the local cluster where CIS is running. And then, of course, this is the remote cluster. And so since CIS in cluster one is primary, 
um, I don't need to specify the service type load balancer because it's local to the cluster. But CI, but uh, cluster two and cluster three, it's not local. So I'm specifying something called service type load balancing discovery true. Like mention where the clusters are and in this extended config map, th think of this like our gateway configuration. And this will most likely move to gateway. And so that's why you define the service of type load balance discovery is true and the same thing in the remote clusters. Because ultimately service type load balancer CIS needs to know where to discover certain items because they're not discovered by default, only in local cluster. And so if we look at how we distribute traffic, like I said, we don't have a CRD. We, we only have what we call annotations. And the reason is because this is of kind service. Right. So it's specified inside the service. So here's the most important thing. You specify your virtual IP. You can associate ports protocols such as WAF, such as firewall. All of the protocols and ports can be defined here because you can add what we call an association of a CRD, policy CRD to the service, which is really cool. We did this for OpenShift routes. I think it works really well because you could have a global policy in play and you can reference that, that will add a lot of the advanced characteristics, capabilities of big IP, and simply just the API just references those objects. Those are existing policies, protocols that are enabled on big IP already. So you, I can enable WAF, I can enable quite a, quite, a lot of, quite a lot of different things. And I might do that, I might create a video next of multi-cluster services, service type load balancer with WAF. That is, that is really cool. Uh, there's not a lot of vendors out there that can do that. In fact, I don't think anybody can do this either, um, but I could be mistaken. And so you can see here, this is of type load balancer. I'm still using cluster IP, but just the services of type LB. So type LB means that it will get the IP address. You can check the status of it. And of course, the ratio is a 50-50-50. And so um, you could actually see what this looks like on big IP. You could actually see on big IP, there's actually three pool members and each of the pools have two, 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 two pods each. And you can see here's the pods right here. And of course, these, these, these are of cluster, cluster IP because that's the default setting. I didn't change the default setting on big IP. I left it as cluster IP. So if I do a coops, if I do a coops CTL get, CTL get pods, you can see um, there is those pods right there. And if I do a minus zero Y, oops, if I do a, uh, so let's see if I can get this right. And so you can see there's the IP addresses 11 and 12, right, which kind of match. This is kind of cluster one. Now, if I actually go and try connect to this cluster, I'm connecting on port 8080. There's no translation on the virtual, right? So that's kind of interesting. Uh, we could always add a virtual port as an annotation if you really, really, really need it but you could actually see right here, there's the current IP address. Now, I should only go, I should only go to the first cluster. Hmm. Now, this is what's really cool here. I've actually played with the weights a little bit. As you can see, I'm only going to 411. If I open a new window here, this is a brand new connection. If I open this connection right here, you can see, I'm only going to, I'm only going to, to the first cluster. But watch this, I'm gonna flip the ratio and I'm gonna push the change. So if you if you look here, the, the ratio of the weight, it's an even split. So we're load balancing across the clusters, right? 50, 50, 50. But if I go in and edit this ratio and actually play with this a little bit, and so, and then change the setting, let, let's take a look. So let's go, you can actually see here, look at that ratio, 100, that's why. Now this is great, why? Because let's say, for example, I'm a Kubernetes administrator and I want to take my first cluster offline. So let's say, for example, I've just upgraded or done something with clusters two and three. I pushed all the traffic to the first cluster. So let's go say I want to, for ex for instance, send all the traffic to the second cluster. Or maybe we do a maybe we do a 50-50 split on how about clusters two and two. So you can kind of see 0-50-50. It's just a kind of split. So I'm going to to distribute traffic between the between clusters two and three. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and save this. We'll go ahead and apply that. You're gonna see a lot of logs. Uh, I'm doing a lot of debugging. Yeah, there's a lot of logs going on there. I just wanna just see if this thing applied. 
at the bottom this 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 container has been running for a while you can see there is the change it's posted the request there's the request going in and there's the eye rule that we're using it up oh, successful okay perfect thank you and so on to the big ap the virtual is there the pools are there now even it's just a it's just a it, the pools are all still discovered right because only if the cluster goes down will we remove the the pool with the pool members but the but the cluster is still available the difference is it's the algorithm it's what the gateway is doing which is actually here in the resources right this is the this is where the magic happens. The magic happens is right here. We're using an eye roll because it's not so easy to do this with TCP, right? And so if I go now to the traffic patterns, you could actually see, so now I'm on cluster three. And so here I'm on cluster three again. And so here I'm on cluster three. So if we go ahead and close some of this traffic out, let's go see if we can hit cluster two. We should be able to get to cluster two as well. So you can actually see that we're no longer we're no longer sending traffic into into okay there's cluster three it's kind of hard sometimes um, just because this is a very very simple TCP connection and um, or actually this is more like HTTP yep see there is cluster two how do I know two forty five is basically cluster two two forty six is is cluster three so you're you're, you're going to see here that there's absolutely zero traffic going to cluster one. Now that is, that right there is simply the manipulation of traffic distribution across three different clusters using a service. Guys, I think that's really cool. I, I'd like for someone to show me uh, something that is of cool as this. This, this is really, this is really great. And so, the, like you said, I just manipulated these, these very specific three different services, right? So this is fine for OpenShift. This is fine for um, for Kubernetes as well. And so if I look, if I look and make a change again to that service, how about we, how about we take the second one offline as well? So now I only have one cluster and this is for example, cluster three. So here's a major upgrade. This is of zero. And so here I'm just manipulating the weights. So what we'll do is we'll apply. That'll take a very simple minute to apply that. Simple API call, simple change to the to the weights in the on the virtual distribution. And as you can see here, it was 246 before. And uh, let's go ahead and make an update here. It should be of 245 or oh no I used the third cluster okay so you're only going to see 246 yep so this will this will change to 246 so you can see so that's that is what I am demonstrating here um, there's a lot that goes into this environment but but please clone my repo um, the test code is all here and um, and you can kind of use this as an example. You can find my repo here. I'm going to paste it into the into the link. So as you can see, big IP distributed traffic using a ratio across three different clusters, and ultimately it's n number of clusters. It doesn't matter the cluster size. It doesn't matter uh, what type of cluster. Right? It's it's it, it's all arbitrary. It's all based on the service. So in this case here, it is multi cluster using service type load balancer. So that's what I wanted to demonstrate. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, please give it a like, please give it a thumbs up, please share it. If you're not subscribed, I, it would be great if you can subscribe. Thank you so much.